Welcome back. Remember our investigation question. Is there a pattern to the weather that we can use to make predictions? Well, we have figured out that temperatures follow patterns in different places around the world. So we've answered part of our investigation question. But now we want to think about how these patterns are useful to us as meteorologists. To do this, we will use an app to continue thinking about patterns and predictions. When I'm in this app, remember you can always read the instructions at the top of the screen if you need help. If you don't remember, you can click instructions up here at the top left and they will pop up for you and it tells you what to do. Now, notice the numbered boxes 1, 2, 3, and 4. And do you see all the ovals in the scrollable toolbar over here on the far right? Remember the features of other apps. You have a reset button and your undo and redo buttons at the top. So let's see what happens with, after we read our instructions. A red number or question mark will pop up as you move the oval. Drag each oval into the box that matches the number that pops up. Then use the pattern to sort the ovals labeled with question marks. Hmm. Let's just see what happens when I click on this oval here. Oh good, a number one popped up, so I am going to put it in number one. And this one. Number two. Number four. Number three and I can use my scroll over here to get more ovals up. This one looks like number one. This tells us it should go in number two. Does anyone see a pattern starting already? Number three. Oh, anyone guess for the, yep, there it goes. Number one. This oval here is for number three, number four, number four, number two. Let's see if we can find these with some question marks. All right, challenge number one. Here is your question mark. Would this go in number one, two, three, or four? I bet you guessed number three. What about this oval here? One, two, three, or four? I'm gonna put it in number four. What about this oval? One, two, three, or four? Probably number one. Let's maybe do one more. We've got this one. One, two, three, or four? Let's put it in number two. So now, because we started to see a pattern, we could decide where to place the ovals with the question marks. If you want, you can pause right now and draw all the ovals if you want to, just so that you can see how each pattern makes a difference. Now we are gonna pause there on our app and look back at some screenshots. Where did we place the ovals with the question marks? And how did you guys know where to place them? Remember the ovals that had squares in it, those all went in box number one. Ovals with spots or different circles went in box number two. You could say ovals with all the stripes went in box number three. And the solid ovals went in box number four. Once we got to the question marks, what helped you know where to place them? I think it was the easiest once we started to get one or two in there and then we could see those patterns. But what we want to remember is, are all the ovals in each box exactly the same? For example, if you just look at box number one, is every oval in there exactly the same? 
What about boxes two, three, and four? Are they exactly the same? I think even though the ovals are not exactly the same, there's a pattern to the type of oval that goes in each box. Because of this pattern, we can predict where the ovals with the question marks belong. Now we're going to try a similar activity, but this one has a range of temperature data and the information that appears is either the name of a state or a question mark. Let's try what happens in this app. Let's read our instructions first. The name of a state or question mark will pop up as you move the temperatures. Drag each temperature into the box that matches the state that pops up. Then use the pattern to sort the temperatures labeled with question marks. So let's try a few here. 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Will that go in Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? Hawaii it is. 50 degrees Fahrenheit goes in New York. 3 degrees Fahrenheit goes in Alaska. And 70 goes in Florida. Now is that enough data to help us build a pattern? We might need a few more, so let's see if these help us. 42 degrees Fahrenheit goes in New York. Mm. 11 degrees in Alaska. 84 degrees in Hawaii. 83 degrees in Hawaii. 46 degrees in New York. Five degrees in Alaska. Has anyone noticed a pattern starting? Let's see if that pattern will help us make a few predictions. Okay, here is your time to predict. 80 degrees. Would that go in Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? If you remember what we talked about in our last lesson about range of temperatures, maybe you'll notice this would make the most sense if it went in Hawaii. What about 8 degrees Fahrenheit? Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? Hopefully you said Alaska, I agree. 45 degrees, where could we put that? I bet you said New York, so I'm gonna drop that there. And we've got 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Oops, let's see. Alaska, Florida, Hawaii, or New York? All right, let's put it in Florida. Now, let's think back. Where did you place the temperatures with the question marks? Remember, they went with all the other temperatures that were similar. Alaska temperatures were all between about three degrees and 11 degrees, brrr. Florida temperatures were between 63 and 70. Hawaii temperatures between 79 and 84, and New York temperatures between 42 and 50. Now I really want you to think, how could you predict where these temperatures belonged? If you want, you can pause your video and write your answer, or you can tell someone nearby. But remember to mention, you were able to make predictions where to place temperatures with the question marks because of those patterns just like the ovals in the first activity. Let's think back a little bit to earlier lessons. The WPO only sent us data for one day for Blue Island, Arc Island, and Creek Islands. Because of this data, would you have been able to predict where the temperatures with the question marks belonged if you only had one day of data for each state? I think that would have been very hard. In order to make predictions, we need to find a pattern, and it takes several days of data at least to figure out a pattern. One way to describe the patterns of temperatures is to find the range that we already practiced doing with the primate reserves. Remember the temperature range for Isalo National Park where the ring-tailed lemurs live? The range was about 76 degrees to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. We can use this pattern to make a prediction about the temperature in Isalo National Park on February 1st. 
the first day of the next month after January. Now we can't say exactly what the temperature will be, but we can predict that the temperature will be between 76 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Remind yourself of the temperatures that we found on Yakushima Island where the Japanese macaques live. The range was about 43 to 72 degrees. Now, could you say exactly what the next day's temperature would be? No, but you could make a good prediction based on your data that it would probably be between 43 and 72 degrees. The nature reserve we looked at in China had a temperature range of 35 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, it would be hard to say the exact number, but you could make a prediction based on the range. So our big important key concept for right now is Although the temperature in a place can change each day, there is a pattern that can be described by the range of temperatures. Different places have different temperature ranges. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna move into the last part of our lesson where we will look at the weather of Bintulu. We looked at this last time in another lesson, it, which is the city on the island of Borneo where our orangutans live. The temperature data was given in a long list. Luckily for us, the data has been transferred to a line plot so that we can see if we can find a pattern and make a prediction. This line plot shows the same data we saw before, but now it's displayed in a different way. Already, what is the temperature range you noticed? Find that lowest number and that highest number. We can see that in Bintulu, Malaysia, the temperature range is 82 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. If you had to predict the temperature for February 1st, the first day after the end of January, would you be able to guess what number the temperature might be? Take a minute to write down your answer if you want. Now, why are you able to predict that number? Hopefully your number was between 82 and 92. But why are you able to choose that? Take a minute to really think about your answer. Try to mention pattern and range, which are both listed here, so that you know how to spell them if you want to write it down, but you can also use those words in your description if you tell a neighbor. As an example, here's something that I wrote. With one month of data from Bintulu, we can see a pattern to the temperature. The temperatures for this month were all between 82 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the range. This pattern allowed us to make a prediction about the weather the next day. Although we cannot predict exactly what the temperature will be, we can predict that it will be between 82 and 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's pause for a minute right before the end of our lesson and practice visualizing temperature predictions. This can help you decide what to wear or what to do and visualizing the temperature in Bintulu helps you better understand how hot it is where the orangutans live. We will use what we've learned about patterns in the weather to look at evidence from Arc, Blue, and Creek Islands in the next few lessons in order to write arguments about which island's weather is the most like where the orangutans already live. For your lesson reflection today, think of a pattern. Describe it. Explain what makes it a pattern. You can write your description down and then draw different examples of patterns if you want. You can also rewind and go back and look at our examples of the ovals earlier if you need some ideas for kinds of patterns. That's it for today's lesson. I'll see you next time.